ها قد تنام حلمكم من مثلكم قد حاز من دنياه حفظا للكتاب The first of these issues is that of paper and the manufacture of paper. Many of you might not know that Muslims were the first to really manufacture paper at an international level. That Muslims were the one who spread paper to the entire globe from India to Europe. But they didn't invent it. They perfected it and they popularized it. Where did, they, where did it come from? In the battle of Tal'as in 751 CE, which is in the first century of the Hijrah, under the caliphate of the early Abbasid dynasty, in the battle of Tal'as, Muslims fought against a small group of what we now call Chinese uh, nations. And paper had been invented by the Chinese. However, they didn't understand its significance. And it was something that only the elite did. It wasn't mass produced and the Chinese as a nation still used papyrus. Now papyrus is thick. Papyrus has to be folded up. Papyrus is very awkward to deal with. Paper, as we all know, is thin. Paper lasts forever. Papyrus only lasts for a few decades. The Chinese invented paper, but they kept it a state secret. They didn't want anybody to know about it. In the Battle of Tal'as, the Muslims captured two prisoners of war who were a part of the secret guild of paper manufacturers. New technology. What did they do? They embraced it. They understood the significance of this. So they took these two prisoners of war, treated them like royalty, brought them back to Baghdad, and the Khalifa said, you shall be free to leave back to China as soon as you teach us how to build paper, how to manufacture paper. So the Chinese taught the Muslims the art of paper manufacturing, and the first manufacturing mill in the entire Mediterranean world was set up in Samarkand. There was no paper in Europe at the time. There was no paper in India at the time. The first manufacturing mill was set up in Samarkand. And the Muslims experimented and they produced a better quality of paper. And eventually Baghdad, eventually Andalusia, the entire Muslim world produced different types of paper. Once upon a time there was Sulaimani paper, there was Dawoodi paper, there was Samarkandi paper. And by the way, the ancient Chinese, they used to call paper Kaghaz. This, ter this term is ancient Chinese. So we still call paper Kaghaz from the ancient Chinese to show you where it actually came from. Eventually the government, the Islamic government adopted paper as its official means of communication. So paper spread throughout the Muslim land from Andalusia on the one side, on the west, all the way through Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, all the way through Arabia, Damascus, Syria, Palestine, Iraq, all the way down to the borders of what is now China, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. Paper became the norm. And with paper, what comes with paper? Books, education, universities, institutions, libraries, because paper is the medium of education. And it is not a coincidence that Islamic science has flourished, the writing of books flourished, scholarship flourished when paper was discovered. And with paper came, as I said, the largest universities in the world. The first, the first universities and the largest libraries were Islamic libraries. And the fact of the matter is that Muslims were the first to have something that we now understand as being a university. And this is not a, 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 a braggado claim. It is a claim that has been documented by researchers. A famous scholar, uh, George Makdisi, has an entire book called The Rise of Colleges in Islam. You can find it on Amazon. And in it, he documents the first colleges and the first universities were those produced by the Muslims. The notion of adults getting an education was something that Islam did. And of course, it's not a coincidence. All of this is happening with the medium of paper flourishing. The West eventually discovered paper in the first crusade, in the second crusade, when they entered Jerusalem and they found the Muslims with paper, they brought it back to Europe. And Europeans, their appetite was whetted for paper. Where do we get paper from? And when they conquered Andalusia, they found the first paper printing presses they had ever seen in their lives. The first paper manufacturing mills. And this is an interesting fact of history. They expelled all the Muslims of Andalusia except for a handful who could teach them sciences they didn't know. 
And of those sciences, they didn't know how to make paper. So of the Muslims who were forced to remain were those who owned the paper manufacturing mills, those who knew the art of paper. And from Andalusia, Europeans acquired the art of making paper. And it spread throughout all of Europe until eventually they set up printing, not printing presses, paper presses, excuse me, paper mills in Italy. And guess what? The Europeans started making better paper than the Muslims. For 200 years, paper was sold to Europe. Around 1500 or so, the Europeans began producing better paper. And from that point on, many of our manuscripts that we still find are actually being written on European paper. And we see here the beginning of the rise and decline, the beginning of the fall. Paper is coming from Muslim lands to Europe, 1300, 1400. Around 1450, 1500, what happens? The Europeans discover better ways to make paper, better quality paper, stronger paper. So what happens? They begin selling to Muslims. You see the tides of change slowly coming along. And Europe excels in the art of manufacturing paper. Eventually, of course, paper also moves to India in the 13th century. Now, Paper is always a sign of civilization and education. Not coincidentally, when paper flourishes in Europe, what happens? The rise of knowledge, the Protestant Reformation, the Renaissance, all of this is happening around the same time that paper is being introduced to Europe. And Europeans have a surplus of paper. And when you have a surplus of a commodity, what happens? You begin thinking what to do with it. What can we do? How can we better utilize what we have an excess of? And therefore, not coincidentally, around 1450, who comes along? Johannes Gutenberg, the inventor of the printing press. And the printing press is considered to be one of the most important technological advancements in the history of humanity.